This is the 2015 BMW i3 without a range extender model, and I'm not Doug DeMuro. Let's just roll it. So tomorrow is the day that I have to turn in my beloved i3, and I came home with it on April of 2016 with my little electric sports car, and I'm more of a fan now than I ever have been of the car, and it's only grown in the time that I've had the lease. To get my complete thoughts on the car, I would look at a video that I did when I was four months in, I really liked it then, and then I'll really wrap things up now as I turn this in tomorrow. Some background on why I chose the car, I drove a three series for many years. Before that, I had an old Mercedes diesel that I absolutely loved. We have a Ford Escape, which is our family car, and this car was kind of the secondary family car. I needed it every day to get to from work. I used to have a car seat in the back, but now that we have two, all the car seats are in the family car, so this really is just my commuter. So I didn't need room for children in this car. It was nice to have the space. I use it on occasion, but even the Escape, we're gonna be upgrading that soon because we're gonna need a third row. But now that I'm turning this in, wanted to wrap things up. I broke my thoughts down and do a few things. Driving, overall, daily living, range and charging, costs, and then I'll wrap it up. So overall though, my thoughts on this car is that it's funny looking, but it is absolutely my favorite car that I've ever owned. It's extremely fun to drive because it has the fun driving feel of a Mini Cooper, but it's a slightly larger car. It's all electric. It has super fast torque. It is the fastest BMW from zero to 40 in their entire line. So it would be the i8 off the bat, then yeah, the i8 would smoke it later on. The quick torque, the silent driving, the LED headlights, the design of the entire car. It definitely looks funny when you first get it, but I'm now a huge fan of this car. I was following my wife home as she was driving this one day and I like go, was overcome with how much I really started to love the look, the feel, and the driving of the car. So the incredible handling, the extremely tight turning radius, fits into parking spots. The, this has been an absolute pleasure to drive. Even in snow, because the tires are so skinny, you do get pretty good traction in these. I never found it to be an issue. I drive, you know, Pittsburgh is very hilly, very snowy, but I never really had any trouble driving in the snow and I've become extremely used to the regenerative braking on here, basically just driving with one foot, one pedal, and when I go back to a gas car after driving my car for a while, I'll forget and I'll, I'll anticipate the pull forward. So overall, driving performance, absolutely love it. And just this little chime when it starts up, love it. And as you get with any electric car, totally silent operation, and it starts so fast. Now for daily living and overall use of the car, I love the design of this car. I always have called it my Swedish living room on wheels. The design of the seating, the wool tweed, the leather, all of it looks great. I wear a lot of like raw denim and it never really wore off in the car, which is nice. It never feels too hot in the summer or in the winter. It feels nice because it is that kind of wool tweed. And I do have the technology package in here, so it does not have CarPlay. And I've talked about this in my X2 video that CarPlay to me doesn't offer that much more functionality than just using the built-in BMW connected drive. It has great Bluetooth functionality. I get in the car, it starts my podcast or audio book right where I left off with no hesitation. I can program three devices into there. And so my wife, when she gets in with her key into the car, it plays her phone. When I get in with my key, it plays my device. And so the connected drive functionality is great. I don't have the backup camera in my model, but I do have the sensors that show you how close you are to something. I haven't found it to be a big issue because the mirrors also auto rotate whenever you're backing up to show you the ground. And the car is so small anyway, that it's pretty easy to see where you're going. And when you turn around to look out the back window, you can basically see where you're at. It reminds me a lot of uh, my friend's Jeep Wrangler. It's like, if you look out the back of a, of a little Wrangler, you know where you're at. The other thing to note is that this car is unique looking and people will look at you everywhere you go. And I notice that a lot when I drive my wife's Escape. There's tons of escapes out there. No one cares about that car. But when you drive this through a, a populated city or you drive this through anywhere with people, people are gonna look because it looks kind of goofy. And uh, whether that's for you or not, that's up to you. Now for charging, this is easily the biggest question you get about a car. So first you have level one, level two, and then level three here for really fast charging. I've used that a few times. When you plug it in, you get a blue indicator to let you know that you are charging. When you lock the car, this is locked into the car. You can't take it out and the lights go off, which is nice because this is by my window. And so that makes sure that you're not getting too much light in there. You also have a little, uh, carrier here for the charger. Now I drive 50 miles every single day and so it's 25 up, 25 back and the range has not been a problem at all. I also use, this is the occasional use charger. I never ended up installing a 220 volt charger inside the house. This has been serving me fine. Now it is very slow 
from dead to full, it takes about 28 hours. But since I only drive 50 miles a day, I come home with about 45% left. So when I leave the next day, that 12 hours charges it just fine. In the past two and a half years, I really haven't felt any range anxiety. If anything, I've started to feel like a range anxiety about gas cars because I leave with this car full every single day. I also know in times of emergency where any chargers are around either my office or in the city where I can go and charge and top off for about 20 minutes. And with that being said, I elected for the non range extender version and that hasn't really been an issue at all. For any questions about winter driving, I did a full video on that. I saw a huge reduction in range and so that actually became a problem for a couple of the days. There's a lot of range loss. Otherwise, I really haven't felt that I needed the range extender and so that's a pretty good thing. As for the cost of charging, it's been about $15 a month if I look year over year in the months that I've been charging. A lot of that has been offset. I did get Solar City installed around the halfway point that I've been using this, and so the charging hasn't been an issue at all. I also drive and park at the airport a lot, and so even on my longest trip was about two and a half weeks, I saw no degradation in battery as it sat there idle, so I just had no problem driving home. From the time that I got the car till now, chargers in Pittsburgh have doubled easily that I can go use. They even have one out at the airport now. You access the front and back storage at this button here. Let's talk about the frunk first. The frunk I never use. I put a uh, thing of windshield wiper fluid in here when I first got it, and I would refill it. It's not weatherproof. You can see I got some uh, pine needles in there, and it's not very big, and it's kind of hard to access. And so it's nice that it's there. This is an emergency kit uh, that's in here, but you don't want to put anything in there. Like in a Tesla, you can put your groceries and stuff in. Uh, but so the frunk, minor thing, never really used it. The thing that always drove me crazy about past BMWs is all the brake dust that goes on the wheels because you don't really use the brakes on here and because of the way they're designed, no brake dust on here, which is great for a nitpicky person like me. The suicide doors did prove to be extremely useful, especially while accessing the back seat for a car seat. The front opens up nice and wide, really like that. And then as you get to the back, you have direct access here and there's no beam in the center. And so the suicide doors proved to be really nice. There were some times when people would get in and out of the back seat and you'd have to explain to them, you close the back one before the front one and then people get in and out. Otherwise, it proved to be extremely useful for getting in and out, even for some older folks. The back seat is pretty spacious, even at 6'4". I've got some headroom in here and some leg room. That's one of the benefits of not having so much mechanics inside of the car that you're usually hiding under a typical ice car and then for the front seat plenty of space in there as well both of these seats have a fold down button right here for easy access and then in the front seat plenty of space as well the back I always found to have ample space for storage and because the car is so large on the inside you can fit a lot more in there than people expect and if you need extra space it's really easy to drop these seats down and you have a ton of storage space in the back. There were a number of times I squeezed some big things coming home from Lowe's into the back of this car. The key is your typical BMW design. You have lock, unlock. The trunk is actually, that's like the i8 design. So you can pop it, but it's not powered. And then you have the alarm. What's cool about the housing for the rear view mirror here is it has a camera and sensor for the active cruise control. I did a video on that. You can check that out as well, I'll link to it below. But that is the biggest thing I'm going to miss of this car. You set a speed that the car is going to go and then it intelligently keeps pace with the car in front of you. So I drive to work most days without ever touching the gas or the brake because the car does all the driving for me, which is extremely nice. Also the windshield and the windshield wipers have your standard sensor for when the rain hits it, automatically runs the windshield wipers, which is a nice little feature. They also did a substantial update to the BMW app. It's actually an entirely new app where you can unlock and lock before you can only do one. You can flash the lights, honk the horn. You can locate it on a map, which um, I never really used, but it's a nice feature. And then you can also start the climatizing. I precondition my car almost every single day. In the summer, I want to get in when the car is nice and cool. In the winter, you get in the car is toasty warm and I love that feature as well. I know a lot of modern BMWs have that feature where you can start it from the phone, but if you get into this car and it's toasty on a cold day, that is beautiful. And you can also set so that the car will charge when it's plugged in, so you leave and the car has already warmed up its battery. So they used to have one button that was preconditioned. Now you can separate out the climatization versus the charging. And then in the e-drive menu, you see your efficiency. You can also see how many kilowatt hours were used in the drive. 
and just get some overall information in the car. And I've used this a few times to either lock the car from inside the airport or unlock my car when somebody came out to work on the car from my office and you can have multiple BMWs in here. My biggest complaint with the app is that you still can't just use your phone as a key. I believe the new Model 3s is, are one of the first cars that are allowing you to do that, but even though you can do a lot in the phone from locking, unlocking, and starting, you still have to have the key in your pocket to get up and go, so I'd really like that functionality in future cars. And it's tough to see now in the daytime, but when you unlock the car, it glows. The whole cabin is this blue glow, which is a really cool look. And then the handles always are lit as you walk up to them. So at night, it kind of glows to the ground. And when the car is locked, those go off. But you can lock the car with this little button here, which is nice. And then you unlock by just putting your finger in there in the car with the car key in your hand. And finally, cost. Other than my monthly lease payment, I've paid $1,000 for tires, $500 for the front, $500 for the back pair, and $80 for a service and registration fee. Other than that, I have paid nothing, which has been really nice because I have had not the best luck with uh, gas vehicles. You know, our Ford has had a number of repairs. The BMW before this, I poured money into. Uh, especially at the end of its life, but you know, there was little repairs here and there, but because the car has no, you know, true moving parts, no, you know, there's not as many mechanical failures that can happen here. Sure, the catastrophic ones could happen, like a battery replacement or something major to the car. Uh, that is one of the benefits of having the lease versus owning the car outright. And as I said before, about $15 a month for charging, 50 miles a day, about 300 miles a month. I've put almost 25,000 miles on this car in the past two and a half years, and it's been just wonderful. So that is a wrap on my 2015 BMW i3. Absolutely love the car, definitely would get again. They're making the batteries bigger now, so you get more range in the same package, which is really nice. And uh, what can I say? I do this video because it is about your style. A car does help portray your image to the world the same way that your clothing does. And so whether it's your house, your car, your suit, your shoes, anything else, it all kind of wraps up together. And that's what this channel is all about. I hope you enjoy the video as much as I've enjoyed the car. If you have any questions about it, happy to answer down in the comments. You can also reach out at the underscore Cavalier on Twitter and Instagram. Love to hear from you guys over there. And until next time, gents, this is the Cavalier.